Hello learners, this is Habiba with Excel with me. If you like the video, please do like, share, subscribe and comment below. Let's start today's class that is research in education. In the previous class, we have understood about tools of research that is what is a tool and what are the characteristics under characteristics. Out of three characteristics, we have discussed what is validity. And under validity, what are the types of validity we have discussed that is content criterion related and construct validity we have discussed thoroughly. So today we are going to discuss about the third characteristics of a good research tool that is reliability. A tool used for data collection must be reliable that is it must have the ability to consistently yield the same results when it is repeatedly administered to the same individuals under the same conditions. Suppose I am taking a test on somebody. If I have taken one subject related to my research problem, I will conduct the test with my tool. After some time, again I will conduct on the same subject with the same tool. If I am getting the same result, that means I can rely on that test. Con uh, consistently, if I yield the same result, repeatedly if I administer the test on the individual, then that will be reliable tool. Now, for example, if an individual records his or her responses on various items of a questionnaire and thus provides a certain type of information, he or she should provide approximately the same type of responses when the questionnaire is administered to him or her on the second occasion. Just now I explained in this first occasion and the second occasion, if the same results are there of the subject, then that could be reliable test. Then if an achievement test is administered to learners and then re-administered after a gap of 15 days without any special coaching in that subject, within these 15 days, the learners must show similar range of scores on re-administration of the test. Now repeated measure of an attribute, characteristic or a trait by a tool may provide different results. They may be due either to a real change in the individual's behavior or to the unreliability or inconsistency of the tool itself. If the variation in the result is due to a real change in behavior, the reliability of the tool is not to be doubted. However, if the variation is due to the tool itself, then the tool is to be discarded. Now under this there are three methods we can see in reliability, the test retest method, first one. Four methods we will discuss today, the first one is the test retest method. The same tool is re-administered to the same sample of population shortly after its first administration. The chief advantage of this method is that if the time between two administrations of the tool is short, the immediate mem memory effects, practice and the confidence induced by familiarity with the tool may give a wrong measure of its reliability. So on the other hand, if the interval is too long, the real changes in behavior in terms of growth may underestimate the reliability of the tool. Owing to these limitations, the test retest method is generally less useful than the other methods. This type of measurement is commonly used with questionnaires, observations and interviews. Now the second one is the split half method. That is the tool is first divided into two equivalent halves. Suppose if I am taking 100 questions, 50, 50, two halves that will be divided. The measure of the first half of the tool is correlated with the measure of the other half. The measure are correlated to find the reliability of tests and attitude scales. The main limitation of this method is that a tool can be divided into two halves in a number of ways and thus the estimate of the reliability may not have a unique value. 
now the third one is the alternate or parallel form method that is it requires the two equivalent or parallel forms of tool be prepared and administered to the same group of subjects now the items in these tests are parallel then the results in terms of two sets of measures obtained by the use of the tool are correlated to measure the level of its reliability now in developing the parallel forms of a tool care has to be taken to match the tool material with the content the difficulty level and the form now the parallel form method is widely used for determining reliability of a research tool obviously the reliability of a psychological test and attitude scales is usually estimated by this method obviously when you are taking any psychological test uh, and also the attitude scales are used in this method why because parallelly they want to have the results to determine the reliability of the research tool now the fourth one the rational equivalence method this method of measuring reliability is considered to be free from the limitations of the other methods discussed so far two forms of a tool are defined as equivalent when their corresponding contents are interchangeable that is this method is most commonly in used in estimating the reliability of psychological tests so we come to the end of this session in the next class we will understand about the third characteristic of a good research tool that is usability thanks for your attention and time if you like the video please do like share subscribe and comment below happy learning